In one of my last videos, I made a game using SDL, and in the comments, a lot of people were saying, why aren't you just using Raylive? To which I just blocked them immediately, because I don't like to be challenged. And then, for some reason, I had this idea, what if I tried making a game using Raylib? After all, it's a pretty lightweight framework written in C, which I've been playing with lately, and it's named after this guy. His name's Ray. Hi, Ray. He's a game developer and professor who not only created Raylib, he's still maintaining it today. Well, him and like an army of open source contributors. So not only am I going to make a game for Ray, I'm going to be critiquing and praising things as I come across them and judging for myself what Raylib's really all about. And at the end, I'll throw it up in the browser for anyone that wants to play it. But first we need to actually install and set up Raylib, which for me was just as simple as installing the Raylib package on Linux. Then I just had to go to the Raylib website and copy and paste the starter project, which we can then run and and a window. Shout out to the cornflower blue background. Real ones know. And now we have this window that's a reflection of my own life, filled with promise and opportunity, but probably not living up to any of that, which is reinforced by this alien. Check this guy out. I'm actually pretty proud of him. The thing is, he was supposed to be Shrek, Donkey. which I obviously missed the mark on, but we're just gonna roll with it. And the good news is with Raylib, it's actually so easy to draw textures. This took like two seconds to get going, but now we have our player in our window. And I even found out how to draw text. It was the draw text function. Who'd have thought? Definitely gotta jot that one down in the notes. Which brings me to something I found wasn't that great, which is the Raylib cheat sheet. Don't get me wrong, it's incredibly helpful, but just kind of like, look at it. It's kind of a lot. But I did find a section here all about input, and using that I now have my player following around my mouse and walking around. So the documentation might be kind of scary, but the actual use of the functions and everything is incredibly easy. So easy that I was able to actually draw circles and make them move using a bunch of vector math that I hate and don't like ever doing. Hey, I should probably tell you about the game I'm planning on making. You see, I obviously had an idea for a top-down shooter. That's why I drew Shikalian the way I did. But other than that, I haven't had too much of a plan. Obviously, we're gonna need some enemies to shoot at, and I imagine some sort of shop system to buy upgrades, but otherwise, I'm kind of freeballing here. But for a goal, that seems as good as any, so I'm gonna go ahead with that. And look, enemies! They're just red circles, but you actually can shoot them and they'll go away. And you'll notice I actually made it so the bullets come out of the gun, but the problem is like I had to do an offset for that and now they don't actually go to where my mouse is, which feels terrible and I need to fix that. And as much fun as it is to shoot these red circles and feel superior and powerful, it's only fair if they could fight back a little bit. So now if you run into a red circle, you'll die. And after a couple seconds, you'll spawn back in the center of the screen and be invulnerable for about two seconds. This gives you a chance after you die to get back on your feet. And now you actually count your lives in the top left and if you die too many times well game over if you're dying to stationary red circles you suck the shame of that happening is a pretty good incentive to want to kill these red circles but you know what's an even better incentive money everybody likes money so now when you kill enemies you get a little bit of money every single time so not only are you getting rich if you somehow manage to game over on these red circles that is really embarrassing no one will ever forget that and they shouldn't and you should probably be bullied that definitely didn't happen to me in my own game that i made and it definitely didn't make it so now that the enemies move around and chase you it's not as embarrassing if it did it's really not a big deal and it's actually kind of cool and impressive and cool also added a wave system so there's only a few enemies at the start and every wave you survive more monsters start getting added incrementally. Red circles? Yuck. I made these alien zergling-like creatures that are gonna act as the enemies, which I think are a lot more menacing, especially since I made them uh, too big. I gotta shrink them. And instead of having these enemies spawn just all across the screen, they're all gonna spawn outside of the screen and walk their way in towards the player. That way it gives you a little bit of time at the start of the wave to really assess where they're all coming from. This is a deeply strategic game. The problem to me now is we're just too rich. You play the game and you just make hundreds of money, but money isn't fun because you can't spend it. So it's time to add a shop. I made this alien looking shopkeeper and put him in the game. I don't know why I gave him a wood table when it's like an alien game, but it's also kind of a Shrek game in that it's actually nothing like a Shrek game. You gotta leave some things open-ended. But I made it so at the end of every wave, the shopkeeper will spawn and you can open up a menu and buy either extra lives or increase your fire rate. And to make the fire rate seem worth it, I made it to start with a really, really slow one. At which point now with the shop, we actually have a game loop that's kind of fun. There's a very simple progression and you see how far you can get. So I kind of stopped and just played around with polishing this by tweaking colors and enemy speed values and fire rate values and money values. And through that, I liked a lot of the options. So I just made it after the third wave. Monsters get randomly altered in terms of speed and size. Gives a little spice, a little variety. And then I wanted to play with more Raylib type features. So, you know, playing sounds and music is a must, which is really, really easy. It's stupidly easy with Raylib. 
You just load the audio file and say play. Not too bad. I saw they had some camera controls, so I introduced a screen shake when you die or when you shoot an alien. And then I made a poof animation for the shopkeep. It's actually amazing how much Raylib gives you out of the box that's like so easy to use. It's pretty much just like plug and play functions. I don't know, I thought it was nice. I basically would see something on the cheat sheet and be like, I wanna do that. And then I had it done in like five minutes. But now comes the fun part, taking this game and getting it onto itch.io for everyone to play. I do this for all my games and it never has any problems. It's always so easy. And what we need to do is build this game into WebAssembly using mscripten. But in order to do that, we need to take Raylib, clone it onto my machine, build it using the web platform to generate this file. And then we take this file and let mscripten know about it. And using that, we can build the game, which generates all this web output. And then we zip it up and put it on itch.io io only for it to throw an error because it's not able to play any of my audio or music files because I realized after the fact that actually Raylib is only supporting .wav files and not .mp3s or .oggs, which I didn't realize for a long time, and it went through a pretty grueling gauntlet of figuring out what was causing the issue of uncommenting and commenting code until I did. But now you can play the game in your browser. Link in the description. Overall, I would probably say Raylib is the best low-level game dev tool I've used so far. Once I got into it, it was really intuitive and approachable, and I was constantly making progress that I wasn't, like, ever frustrated. I obviously did a small project, but I'm sure if I did something larger, a lot of the issues and frustrations I'd have would be my fault. The things Raylib gives you out of the box, you know, pretty good. Pretty good. I probably have to unblock those people that were all telling me to use it, but I don't know how. Sorry. And to Ray, you're the best. Thanks for making Raylib. I definitely want to keep using it for other projects. If you want to see more ways of making games, make sure you subscribe. There's a lot of other tools I'm going to be checking out. And make sure you check out this video because YouTube thinks you're going to like it. But whatever you do, go and try Raylib right now. Or else.